Hey squad, welcome back. Today, as promised, I'm doing a follow-up to my recent Boom Bap production video. And my plan is to give you some extra tips and tricks on how you can use the tools right here in Logic Pro to create unique, original, old school sounding samples, which will help you to avoid copyright strikes and also give you an original sound that makes you stand out from the rest. Now, if you haven't seen any of my Boom Bap production videos yet, make sure you click the link in the top corner of the screen to take you right to them. Anyway, let's dive in. Okay, so the first step to this whole process is to create a four or eight bar section of music that will sound very much like something you'd be looking to sample from an old school vinyl record. Now, if you think about it, the majority of samples used in hip hop typically would come from R&B and soul classics from the 60s, 70s, and even the 80s. And that's the blueprint or template laid down by the pioneering DJs and producers who are responsible for creating this style of production. So right here, I've got just that. I've created an eight bar section of music, which I'm gonna play back to you in a second. I haven't added the bass or the drums, just the rest of the elements, because the plan is to create the rhythm section separately. So let me play you back the musical elements and explain exactly how to get this thing to work. Let's start off right here with these two electric guitar parts, both of which I've pulled from Logic's Apple Loops library. <laughs> In fact, I've got four guitar parts, and in order for me to make sure the sound works, I'm sending all four of these to a guitar bus, and on the bus, I've got an effect to glue them together and process them as one. And the tool I'm using right now is the Waves CLA guitars, which is great. And I'm not doing anything extra here, just the factory default setting is pulling these sounds together and helping them to gel all as one. So let's bring all of the guitar parts in. Okay, so those are my guitars. Next up are my strings, sort of orchestral sounding instruments. Now it's really important to understand that we must process all of these instruments and sounds in the right way. Because remember, when you're sampling from a record, you're sampling a section of a song that's already been processed, mixed and mastered by engineers from decades ago. So when you're building your four bar or eight bar musical section, keep that in mind and make sure all of your sounds are properly prepared. So let's bring in some of the strings and I'll show you what I've got going on. Now, once again, on the strings, I've got processing. Right here, I've got the Waves JPP Strings plugin, and that's working its magic on my string sections. Now, let me bring in my horn, flute, and bell parts. Now, all of these sounds, instruments, parts are very typical to what you'd be hearing in an old school R&B or soul classic. Now, there's one other thing I want to bring to your attention before we move on, and that is the panning that I'm doing right here. It's important that when you're creating a mix, not just for a project such as this, but any other project, that you pay attention to creating some separation using the pan control on your mixer to create an enhanced stereo image. Now make sure you check out my videos which cover this particular aspect of mixing and production using the links above or in the description. Okay, let's move on. Of course, we've got our keys and right here, as I've shown you guys before, I'm using the Waves Electric 88 electric piano, which really is my favorite electric piano. It's something you really ought to check out. I've got links in the description for you to download and try out 
all of the Waves plugins that I'm demonstrating right here in this video. So make sure you do so. You can download and try out absolutely free of charge. The other thing I've got going on on the key section is this fantastic plugin, which is the Maserati HMX, which is beautiful for adding great harmonics to your keyboard parts. So let's just bring in the keys right now so you can hear what this is adding to the overall production so far. Okay, and finally, of course, I've got my piano, my grand piano right here. And once again, I'm processing, I'm making sure that the grand piano has the right texture that's going to fit well with this production. I'm processing it with this one here, the, the Greg Wells Piano Centric Plugin, which once again adds the character that I'm looking for to make this whole production work well together. So this is the eight bar section that I'm going to use to create my sample. But there's one more thing I really must do, which is absolutely crucial to creating authenticity. Okay, so reverb. Now there are a number of ways in which you can use reverb. And of course you can have reverb on individual channels like so. Or you can have a reverb processing a bus. So as you can see here, I've got all of my guitars going through to this guitar bus. I can, of course, put a reverb on the bus right here and pass everything on that bus through that reverb. Alternatively, you can set up a global reverb on a separate bus using the sense like so. And that single reverb can be used to process all of your tracks in the amount or measure that you desire. And that's what I've done right here. On bus number four, I've set up a reverb and the reverb I'm using is the Abbey Road Chambers reverb from Waves, which aims to replicate many of the reverb settings and processing you would get at the legendary Abbey Road Studios. So how does the reverb help in this particular case? Well, this is what it does. It provides an environment for all of your sounds to exist in. So in effect, I'm sort of placing all of my instruments in the same room or same acoustic space. So right here, I'm using one of the many presets that come with this particular plugin. I've just gone for warm chamber and I haven't really touched anything here, but it definitely adds the texture and feel that I'm looking for. So as you can see right here, all of my channels are sending through to bus four, which means all of my instruments are benefiting from the reverb processing of this unit. And now it's time for us to get to the sampling. So what we're going to do is export this or bounce this down as a stereo file. On my master bus, I've got a few plugins already and I'm going to keep these on because I want a complete mixed sound for this sample. So what we're going to do right here is bounce this down as a tw as 24 bit, 44.1 kilohertz. And we'll hit bounce here. Okay, so now we are going to pull our sample back into our project. But this time we're going to pull it right over here and we're going to drop it onto Quick Sampler Original. Okay, now a new instance of the Quick Sampler is opened up with our sample. Let's have a listen. Okay. Now, as you can see right here, the root key is set to C3. Now I want to change that to C1, which will allow me to, to map the sample from a lower position on the keyboard. The other thing I'm going to do right here is I'm going to change the polyphony to mono. Now the sample will not trigger from two keys on the keyboard simultaneously. Now the next thing I want to do is change the mode right here to slice mode. And as you can see, we've got lots of slices, which are going to be mapped to different notes on the MIDI keyboard. I'm going to change it from transient right here to beat divisions. And then I'm going to change the divisions right down to 
one division per beat. So if I did this, Now I can play around with different slices and figure out what sort of slice pattern I want to come up with for my production. So what I'm going to do is remove all of this stuff here because we don't need any of these elements anymore. We've already created our eight bar loop. We've bounced this out as a sample and that's now been imported into the quick sampler. So really we could remove these and bring some drums in. Okay, so I've brought in my drums and my bass line and I'm going to come up with a pattern that will work well with this. So have a quick listen to the bass and drums. Now on my sampler track, I've got a velocity processor and I've got it set to value and the value at 90. This is a fixed value, which means irrespective of how hard or softly I hit my MIDI keyboard, the samples will be triggered at the same velocity of 90. And a final thing I'm adding to my sampler track is this plugin right here, the Waves RetroFi plugin, which is great for processing your old school boom bap samples, as well as if you're doing lo-fi chill or lo-fi hip hop uh, productions, this is a great tool for giving your productions a retro feel. Right now I'm using the preset under Master um, 70s album, that's the one I'm using. I've switched off the echo and reverb setting and I've taken the noise all the way down to zero because that was a bit too much. And now I'm going to play back the production and lay down a pattern using the slices right here. So let's do that. Okay, let's quantize that and have a listen. Now I've just used a few of the slices right here. There are so many other options and combinations I can experiment with, but essentially this is how you go about creating your own original, unique, old school sounding sample loops. So hopefully I've brought you some value. And if I have done so, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment to download and try out all of the plugins I've used right here, because you may well find that they work for you. Until next time, I'm Deuce, I'm out. Peace.